Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I was all set up to repot my root over temple ficus into this new pot that Sophie made for this tree. And then I watched the last video of this and it was last repotted in September of last year. So it hasn't been in this pot very long. And I'm thinking, I, I think I better let it uh, kind of grow and settle down in this pot. I had a lot of rocks that I put in to push the roots up against the temple. If I take it out of the pot, I might upset that whole process of trying to get the roots closer to the temple. So I've decided I'm not going to repot it now. I'm going to wait maybe until it's grown all summer and then I'll repot it in fall before it goes indoors for the winter. I'm going to start today with an update to the community orchard, the First Nations garden the community gardens, and the edible forest. So let's head over to the gardens now. I'm taking the cool way through the forest to the community gardens. This is a really nice forest. There's a lot of mature trees in it. So there's the pathway that goes to the community gardens. It's a beautiful forest. The forest floor is full of inspiration. Look at the roots down here. Just amazing. The trees are just awesome too. Look at those roots. There's a nice cool breeze in the forest here. Sure feels good on a hot day. There's a hawthorn lit up by the sun. It looks beautiful. Wow, beautiful trees. Here's a good example of deadwood on a tree. So the main leader died up here. You can see the deadwood top and then a branch has taken over as the main leader and grown up into the sky. Here's an example of a twin trunk spruce. So you can see the two trunks start here and they run side by side very tight to each other. And both trunks go way up into the sky also. Interesting. This part of the forest used to be full of ash trees, but the emerald ash borers got them all, so they've all been cut down, and now it's more like marshland. So the trail to the orchard has been improved. You can see it's a nice walking trail now. Here we are now, coming out into the orchard community gardens. Let's head into the community garden area first. So you can see everything is growing really, really well. Lots of food on the go. So I'll take you over to our nursery plot where we grow our trees. Here we are, so you can see I've got four tamaracks or larch trees growing. These were grown from those little seedlings in the ground they grow very very fast they look really good there's a kentucky coffee tree growing here that we planted from a seed it's starting to look really good and these tall trees here are plum trees cherry plums they were grown from a seed and they're large enough that they can go out into the community orchard now they're really tall we've already moved a couple of them out to the orchard the larches will be moved probably in spring to the First Nations garden, the tamaracks. I think they're tall enough to get planted now. 
Here's my wife's plot, her garden plot, and you can see she has a lot of raspberries in here. I'm going to try one. They look really, really good. Mmm, they taste good too. Originally, on the plan, this whole section here was going to be an edible forest. Nut trees, berry bushes, and kind of pathways through it so you can walk through it and kind of munch along the way on edibles. The focus has kind of changed now. It's become more of a farm. So you can see the plastic here is killing all the grass and that and they're planting it all with uh, crops that they sell at their community market. Here's the start of the edible forest. So there's a few things planted, a few trees, a few raspberry bushes. So this whole area here is designated for the edible forest. So we'll have to put some trails in there and plant lots of trees and understory edible plants. So the idea was to slowly bring this forest, this natural forest, out further and make walking trails through here. So this part of the gardens was originally supposed to be an edible forest and it's kind of changed into a farm. Everything planted in rows. There's nowhere for people to walk through here anymore. I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I think it's turned from a low maintenance edible forest into a high maintenance kind of production farm. They sell all this uh, produce at the market. Yeah, it wasn't originally what this site was meant to be. But, uh, you know, I guess you have to go with the flow. The city did run a water line out here, so we have hose connections. And we did have to water the orchard when we had that really hot, dry spell, which helped the trees out a lot. Here's the apple tree I planted with the Scouts Canada group. You can see it's got apples coming on it. It's good to see the trees producing fruit already. The trees are doing really well, growing. This one needs a pruning in this fall. But yeah, it's looking really good, the trees. There's more production farming here. It looks like it's all onions or garlic. Here's one of our peach trees. It's just loaded with fruit. And they're looking really good. This is a yellow peach. Reliance. Yeah, doing really, really well. We may have to thin some of this fruit. Here's another peach tree that's loaded with fruit. Ripening up, looking good. Out here is the spiral orchard. All the trees we planted. My wife mows the lawn here, the spiral part. Keeps it looking good. Here's one of the plum trees that we grew from a seed. It's planted out here in the spiral orchard now. Doing well. Here is the peach tree at the center of the spiral orchard and you can see the nice peaches coming on that. So the idea is the uh, orchard spirals around and between the trees we plant understory edibles. So you can see all the raspberries ripening up here. And it just goes round and round. So the spiral gets larger and larger and spirals out. So eventually it'll be like a maze that in between all the trees will be this sort of dense hedge of edible plants, which will be really nice. Here's a pear tree that's getting some nice fruit on it. That's looking good. We began the orchard by planting a row of fruit trees down this fence line. You can see this apple tree is getting some nice apples on it. It's just fully loaded with apples. Here's another apple tree with lots of apples growing on it. Here's a quince tree. You can see the fruit developing on that really nicely. Strange looking fruit, but uh, edible. Here's a mountain ash, and these are also edible, these berries. Here's another apple tree loaded with apples. They look good. Here's a plum tree, and you can see there's a few plums on it. Not a whole lot, but you know, it's a young tree. You can see it's struggling for water a bit, but it's doing okay. 
Here's a mulberry tree. I see one mulberry on it that's ripe, so I will eat that. Mmm, good. Here's another plum tree. This one's loaded with plums, and you can see they're starting to ripen up, starting to turn purple. Lots of plums on this tree. Over here we have a cherry tree, and it is loaded with cherries. So I will have to try a cherry. They're not quite ripe, but I better get them before the birds do. So here's a nice, there's a nice one. A little sour, but not too bad tasting. So that's looking good. Here's another quince, and it is just loaded with fruit. Wow, it's looking good. I think they make jams and that out of quince. Here's a high bush cranberry, and you can see it had a lot of fruit on it, but it's been picked over by birds. But yeah, a good producer. Here's the First Nations garden. The circular medicine wheel is over here. Hasn't made a lot of progress, but we started planting it on the weekend. There's one pawpaw tree survived. This First Nations land, uh, you should give an offering before you step foot on it, either tobacco or sage. The cedars out here are growing and surviving. They're struggling, it's full sun and very dry here. So I think it'll take them many years before they get a little more established. Over here is the birch tree that I planted, and I grew this from a seed. It was going to be originally be a bonsai, but then I thought it would be more at home here in the First Nations garden. So it's doing really well. I planted this in spring, and it's definitely growing well. Here is the one surviving pawpaw out of four we planted. They need lots of water and a little more shade than they get out here, but one survived, which is amazing, and it's growing quite well. This apple tree here is one of the first trees we planted, and you can see it's just full of apples. Apples everywhere on it, which is really nice to see. As this spiral orchard develops, I think it'll be a beautiful, beautiful spot to walk through, especially in spring when it's all in flower and in fall when you can get all the fruit. So I think, you know, it's an awesome layout, the spiral. I think once we get the hedges in between the trees up and running and more mature, I think it'll be the coolest spot in the world to walk around the spiral and check out all the fruit. I think it's amazing, you know, to think this was just an empty field at one time and now it's a beautiful orchard. Here's another mulberry tree doing really, really well. You can see the fruit just coming still on it. Looks like it's being picked over the mature fruit, but hopefully someday it'll produce more fruit than we can ever eat. Many of the cherry trees here are just getting growing really well. They're young still, but uh, someday they'll produce a ton of fruit also. Here's some more pears that are looking really nice. So that's the plan for the spiral orchard, to keep planting all these understory edible around and around in the spiral, creating a spiral hedge. Lots of work to go, but uh, we meet every Thursday night and do what we can each week. Here's some nice apples developing here. Look at these. Wow, they look good. Amazing. We also are planting a lot of pollinator plants, ones that attract insects and bees. So this is swamp milkweed. It smells beautiful. Oh, what a smell. It's just gorgeous. Beside it are some nice raspberries. I better try one of these. This one looks fairly ripe. Mmm, it's good. There's some apples on this tree developing really nicely. 
So you can see here what our kind of hedge looks like at first. There's a few raspberry plants here. It's pretty sparse, but they fill in quickly. So we just mow the grass here between the rows and this kind of develops the raspberry spread and, and eventually you'll get a dense hedge around here just loaded with good fruit. We heavily wood chip between the trees also and if you dig down you can see how much moisture there is in the soil beneath. The wood chips do a really good job of holding the moisture in. Without the wood chips I don't think these trees would survive very long out here in the full sun in this dry ground but the wood chips really hold the moisture in and keep the trees happy. Oh, I see some raspberries down here with my name on them. Check those out. Oh. They look good. Oh, they taste so good. Wow. It's so nice to see this part of the plan coming to life and doing well. Here we have some Asian pears. Lots of them, they're developing really nicely. I'm looking forward to trying out some of those. We have a lot of wild rose bushes growing up in the hedge area here. And that's fine because in spring they flower and it attracts all kinds of pollinators. Look at the berries here. Oh my goodness, they're just starting to ripen up. When I designed this spiral orchard layout, the plan was that you could run, you know, the big city mowers around in between the fruit tree rows, just in one big continuous spiral so they don't have to stop and reverse and that. Uh, the city doesn't want to mow this area, so that's why my wife mows it. And it doesn't take too long. You just keep going around and around in a big spiral. I've helped out some nights. Yeah, you kind of lose track of where you are. You just keep going around in the spiral. But it works really well. You never have to stop the mower. You just go round and round. A lot of the trees are still young. They're still getting going. But they'll get there. You can see all the wood chips to help them out. The original plan was to plant more and more fruit trees all around the perimeter of the property but we're not getting a budget for it anymore can't buy more fruit trees so we're trying to start as many as we can in our nursery plot to eventually go and fill out this property even more i see some more mulberries with my name on them oh that looks good oh it tastes so good mulberries are one of my favorite fruits the whole idea of this community orchard and community edible forest was started by Steve Stacy. So he's got a plaque in his honor here. He did a lot for this area. I'm heading back home on the path through the forest. So that is all for today. Your community orchard, community gardens, First Nations garden and edible forest update. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone. <laughs>